Hello, first grade. This is Mrs. Holly. The book we're going to read today comes from a really well-known author, one that I like quite a lot. Her name is Jan Brett. You may have read some of her things before. Her most famous one is called The Mitten, where all the animals jump inside the mitten one by one, and the mitten expands really big and finally bursts. Um, well, this one is called Daisy Comes Home. It's not about a mitten. In fact, it's not even set in um, the cold winter like a lot of Jan Brett's books. Um, it is set in the country of China. And you can tell by the sharp mountains in the background and how warm it is in the front and the girls' clothes. Um, and our character is taking care of some chickens and something happens. Let's find out. Daisy comes home. Look over the garden wall and you will see the six happiest hens in China. They live in Mei Mei's sandy yard by the Lee River where they lay brown eggs. Every day for Mei Mei to sell at the market. But it was not always this way. Once upon a time, the smallest hen, the one Mei Mei calls Daisy, was picked on by all the others. This is hard to imagine because Mei Mei was known far and wide for her happy hens. She gave them treats. She put fresh hay in their nests. She gave them baths when they fell in black and mud. And when she called grr, 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 all the hens would run to her as fast as their legs could carry them. Even Mei Mei's egg baskets were painted with big red characters that read happy hens, and she tried to make it so. I don't know if you remember Chinese New Year when we looked at some of the Chinese characters, and that's like their alphabet. You can see some of their characters there. So on her baskets, it, it says happy hens. But every night, when it was time to roost in the hen house, the other hens picked on Daisy. They fluffed up their feathers and crowded her off the perch. They jostled her until, peck, one of the other pushed her, one or the other pushed her, and thump, off she fell. Then the hens tucked their heads into their feathers and went to sleep while poor little Daisy was stuck below on the damp mud floor, shivering and cold until morning. Jan Brett is famous for these side pictures. So the side pictures don't necessarily happen there. So this is the one of the girl sleeping probably in her house somewhere. And then here's a picture of poor little Daisy on the floor while the other ones are up at the top on the shelf. Here's some more. One day it rained all day and the hens stayed inside. When it got dark, they flew up to their perch, except for Daisy. She had had enough of pushy hens and cold, damp floors. She went outside to find a place to spend the night. Down on the river bank, she spied one of the market baskets. She snuggled in and fluffed up her feathers to stay warm. Daisy was sleeping and didn't see the river creeping up the bank from all the rain, and when the water reached her happy hen's basket, she didn't feel it float out onto the river. Uh -oh. But when the basket started tipping and bobbing, Daisy woke up. She peeked out and saw a watery world all around her, the sandy yard, the garden wall, and Maymay's farmhouse looked smaller smaller as the current carried her down the river. It's getting further and further away. Finally, the basket bumped against a stone where the houseboat, where a houseboat was tied up. Scratch, scratch, scraped the basket as the river waves pushed it up against the sharp rocks. A dog was sitting up on the deck of the houseboat. 
When he saw the plump hen bobbing in the basket, he barked and scrambled toward her. Daisy squawked and pecked and beat the air with her wings. It was enough to tip the basket off the rocks, and she floated away just in time. Dawn broke over the Gwee Mountains as the basket drifted along the river. Branches brushed against it. Fish swam silently by and birds flew overhead. Suddenly, Daisy felt another thump. Now look at that. This, this picture right here is predicting what is going to happen next. And this one over here is a glimpse of what's happening back on the farm where Daisy was. Daisy looked up and saw two big horns and a pair of surprised eyes looking down at her. The basket had drifted into the legs of a great big water buffalo taking a morning drink. The buffalo snorted loudly, scaring Daisy. She flew forward and nipped his furry muzzle and flapped and flapped her wings. Daisy scared the water buffalo. He turned and galloped up the bank, scattering the ducks as he ran. His splashes made waves that carried the basket back into the middle of the river. Daisy traveled along all day until her basket was hooked by the roots of a banyan tree where a troop of red-tailed monkeys lived. The curious monkeys eyed Daisy and climbed down for a closer look. Daisy froze as one monkey crept up to the basket and reached in. Daisy flapped and pecked and nipped and squawked. The startled monkey pushed the basket away. It broke loose from the tree and floated down the river. Daisy wondered what would happen next. I think next a man is going to come along in a boat. And back at the farm, I think Daisy's owner is wondering, what happened to my other hen? Up ahead, Daisy saw a fisherman with cormorants diving all around his bamboo boat. Those must be these kinds of birds here. They were catching fish and taking them to him for reward. The fisherman felt a soft bump behind him. Thinking it was one of the birds, he reached back and grabbed. How surprised he was to see that he was holding a hen instead of the bird. Finders keepers, he exclaimed. Little fish, big fish, silver fish, white fish. That's what I sell at the market. But today I will have this tender young chicken. He put a net over the basket and headed to shore with poor Daisy inside. At home, May May had looked all day and all night for her little Daisy. She wasn't in the hen house. She wasn't behind the farmhouse. She couldn't fly over the wall. Where is she? May May wondered, worried all the time about what had happened. To Daisy. Finally, she knew that she had to go to the market. With a sad feeling, she packed her eggs in their basket and started on her way. So she's going to the market to sell her eggs for a different reason. As the basket swung back and forth, the red character on the sides of her basket made May May feel sadder and sadder. Happy hens, she said to herself. But what about my Daisy? Where can she be? At the market, Mamie found a place and arranged the eggs in a clean, sweet-smelling straw. All morning, shoppers bought her fresh brown eggs, but she couldn't stop thinking about her little lost hen. Mamie heard a voice calling to her. It was her friend saying, yelling from the back of his bike cart. I think that's him right there. There's a bike cart. A fisherman has a happy hen basket, he shouted. Oh, with the characters on it. What, she called, not understanding what he was saying. A happy hen's basket, he repeated. You'd better hurry because he's showing off what's inside. There he is, showing it off for sure. 
Daisy, May May shouted. May May raced to where the fish were sold. There was Daisy, beautiful and plump in her basket, surrounded by a crowd, all wanting to buy her. That's my hen, she cried to the fisherman, but his face was like stone. She pointed to the red characters on the basket. Happy hens, she said. The fisherman crossed his arms. Finders, keepers, he growled and turned away to sell Daisy. Mamie was about to leave, but her eyes rested on those characters, happy hens. All she could think about was Daisy in a cooking pot. She squeezed her eyes shut and clenched her fists. She had to do something. Would that have been right for this man to keep the hen? She is upset because she knows it's her hen and she wants it back. But he had found it. Would it have been right? Hmm. Let's see what she does. Goo, 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 she called at the top of her voice. And when Daisy heard that call, she answered it the way she had done every day of her life. She rose up and threw herself against the basket, tipping it over, and she ran toward her friend, Maymay, as fast as her legs could go. Daisy flew into Maymay's shoulder, and off they went, running back to get Maymay's baskets and go home. <laughs> I think it's obvious that the hen belongs to her now. The fisherman ran after them furiously. Stop, he yelled. That's my hen. Oh, finders keepers, Mamie said over her shoulder. And with Daisy clinging to her, she ran and didn't stop until they were safely home. That night, as the sun went down, Daisy took a place on the roost when one of the big hens fluffed up her wings and spread out, expecting Daisy to fall off the perch like always, Daisy flapped her wings. I learned that from the boat dog, she clucked. Another hen tried to tip her off and she pushed right back. I scared a water buffalo like that, she squawked. Another hen jostled her, peck, 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 peck. Daisy kept her place on the perch and beat her air, beat the air with her wings. She remembered the monkey and she pecked and flapped all again. That was when the hens gave Daisy a place of her own. The lap, lap, lap of the river made a beautiful peacetime um, song. No bumping, no jostling, no fussing around, just six happy hens, their heads tucked in their feathers, high and warm and safe together. So in the end, all six of them are together. Do you remember in the beginning when the five of them always were jostling and throwing Daisy out? And then Daisy went on this adventure and she learned what she needed to do to stay alive. She knew or she learned how to stand up for herself. And she got back to her home. And when the hens once again pecked on her, she fought back. And they all became friends. What a good lesson. Did you see how she changed in the end? She knew how to hold her own at the end. Lots of characters change from beginning to end. At the beginning, she was pretty much walked over and let it happen. But at the end, she became stronger and knew her place. <laughs>